Hi everyone, it's Barbara Michelle. Today I wanted to share with you these two five ring binder junk turtle style books. Um, they're both cookbooks and they both have like cookbook or cooking related materials inside. We're going to start with this Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. So when I got this book at an estate sale, there was a large, well semi-large, like dark spot right here under this under this collage of materials. You can kind of see um, how dark it is right there compared to here. It looked like someone had set a hot pan on top of it maybe because it was a circular shape. So to cover it I added this lady. She's, she's from a magazine and these three vintage recipes. There is lace on the binding to help it stay secure because the binding was separating um, here on the cover. All right, inside is a fabric pocket or tuck spot. Um, there's a little bit of like zigzag stitch on the edge. I sticked, stitched the fabric first and then glued it into the book. And in this tuck spot I just have um, an invitation to dinner, a little restaurant card. This is a recipe. Blackberry Royal Bunt Kink. And an index card with just some pretty decorative punches. And another recipe for watermelon rind preserve. So. Alright, the front page of this book was in pretty bad shape. So I laminated it so I could include it in this book. Oh, let's go back real quick. The copyright date is on the cover in 1951. It goes from 1941 to 1951, but the latest date is 1951. Anyways, okay, so I laminated the front page so I could include it in the book, even though it was, you could see like it's pretty torn up. It's still pretty though. This is a recipe card from a Hershey's little recipe book. They had Hershey's recipes on one side of the book and then blank ones on the other, so it's a blank one. This vellum envelope here, it's a large vellum envelope. Again, most of these things that are in this book came from an estate sale. Um, there's a little bit of pattern paper here that I got at Hobby Lobby, but most of it's from an estate sale. So these are some recipes inside the vellum envelope. And it's pretty thick vellum. Um, sometimes you get it and it's super thin. You know, the stuff that you put in your book. But this seems pretty sturdy. It's just some blank white paper. And I put, I used a punch to make some decorative corners regular paper. This is pattern paper uh, and I folded over the paper to make a tuck spot. There's a little recipe card in there and this little matchbook is made into a tiny little notebook. The little staple right there, you see that? That's just the perfect size for a Tim Holtz. That actually is a Tim Holtz staple but when I took out the original staple, same size. Tim Holtz size. Tim Holtz Tidy Attacher Size, I should be more specific. The Tiny Attacher Staple, that's what that is. It's perfect. So this paper clip is just slid onto the back cover so I could attach it to the book here. Hmm. All right. And I put it at the top because most matchbooks are a little bit thicker on that edge. Um, and it's at the top of the book so that if it sticks out a little bit, you know, um, the thickness won't really affect the book closing, making a big bump or something in it. So that's why it's at the top of the page. Anyways, so this is a paper pad, or not a paper pad, like a paper pack from Hobby Lobby. This um, pattern paper cardstock here. I think it's called Homegrown but I'm not sure. 
Um, but it goes really well with the theme of this book. Here's the first index tab, card, index card tab. And I believe that they're all here, but I'm not exactly sure. A farm utility needle little packaging. It's not food related, but it seems to go with the theme. Vintagey kind of country. Um, a large index card, ledger paper, more white paper. This one's a little bit thinner, but again, it's got some punched corners. Lined paper. A page from this Better or Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. I had to look at it to see if it was Better Homes and Gardens or Betty Crocker. Okay, here's some more patterned cards, uh, pattern cardstock scrapbook paper, and there's just a blank recipe tucked into this lace pocket. The pattern cardstock, um, the scrapbook paper, you can add photos or things like things like that to it because you know that it's supposed to be for photos. Um, there's there's a concern with scrapbookers or uh, memory keepers about placing photos on paper that has acid in it. So a lot of the papers in this book are very vintage. I have no idea if they have acid in them or not. But I do know that the um, the cardstock, the pattern paper cardstock, is made for photos. It's acid free. So that's safe to put your pictures on there. The acid kind of discolors the photo if it's a, if it's um, touching it over like a hundred years or something like that. So if you don't really care about that, it's it's a concern for those memory keepers who want to keep their stuff for a really long time and pass it down generation without it fading too much. All right. Anyway, so this is a vintage recipe. <clears throat> oh, and after saying all that, I don't know that any of these papers have acid or don't, uh, aside from the pattern paper, because it's, you know, designed for scrapbooking. But these ones might be fine, too. Okay, ledger paper. This is a page from this book, the Better Homes and Gardens. Better Homes and Gardens. <laughs> this is a magazine page, and I did cut it short to length to fit in the book, but I left it widthwise intact um, and just folded it over just so you could get the whole picture. It's fun. And if you wanted to, you can make it into um, a little tuck spot or pocket. All you have to do is just run a bit of glue right there. It's not super strong because it's a magazine paper, but you can put stuff in there. And I just held it together with a paper clip. Another page from this book. More pattern cardstock scrapbook paper. Chapter 3. This recipe card is uh, cut apart from that pattern paper pe um, pack. Um, just a notepad paper. Other recipe book pages from a different book, not this one. Well, that's thick. It felt like two pages, but it's just a little bit thicker ledger paper page from this book, chapter three. I tried to, I did try to keep the pages in the chapters that they, they go to. Well, this one doesn't tell me what chapter it goes to, but like this is chapter three, so this page is from chapter three in the book. More pattern paper. This is a little restaurant review thing, so you could go to the restaurant and remember what you liked, things like that, in case you go back. Chapter 4 is Appetizers. Okay. Pattern paper cardstock. Oh, we went from, oh, Chapter 4 and 5, Appetizers and Beverages. I thought I was missing an index thing, but no, Chapter 6. Here is a little vintage label from Sauce, Sweet and Sour Sauce. Okay, it's a label from a can of tomato sauce. Here's the picture from this book. There's a little bit of a... These, this book is a little old, so it's fragile. And I see right there, 
there's a tear in there that I didn't realize. So, see that right there? There you go. The washi tape is not too... Um, I don't have any food washi tape. So it's just like a generic little washi tape. And it will help to keep that picture, that page, from ripping anymore. Hopefully at that particular spot. Like I said, they're vintage. vintage they're old. They're a little fragile. Okay, this is just a blank sort of invitation or blank note card. It has little grapes on it. Maybe for a wine tasting. Another lace pocket. And another cut apart recipe card. Lots of journaling space. This is gorgeous. Gorgeous pictures. Chapter 7. Cakes and cookies. That would be my favorite. I have a sweet tooth mm. and a salty tooth. I like to go sweet, salty, sweet, salty. That's terrible. Okay, this is just, um, I don't know, an index card with the month of May on it. Ooh, that might be more appropriate in Chapter 5. But you can move it around if you like it, just because May is the fifth month. More. Recipes from a different book. Not this book, just some other vintage recipe cookbook. Lined paper has a nice watermark. You can kind of, I don't, I don't think you could see it on camera. It's pretty faint. There's a little bit of texture to this paper, and there's a watermark. Okay, candy, chapter eight. Another little, not well, regular size. Um, magazine page. And another recipe card. Ledger paper. A little white paper with the decorative corners. More scrapbooking pattern paper. A name and address and phone number. And a little calendar page from, I think this is from the 1970s, but I don't remember. Oh, 1973. And there's a, there's a color up here. This is just vintage graph paper, but it's just discolored naturally at the top. A little bit yellow. Bean soup, a vintage recipe. I didn't know that was in there. I mean, I know I put it in there, but I kind of forgot from the time that I made the book to this time that I'm doing the flip through. That's fun. I like that one. Oh, another page from this book. Chapter 11, Desserts. Oh, here's from that Hershey's uh, recipe thing I was telling you about earlier. There was that one at the beginning, uh, right here. So they came in the same little packet, and I just punched the holes. Chocolate cheesecake. This is... Um, a brown bag, glassing bag, but there's nothing inside there. It's a space for you to put your goodies, huh? Okay. Well, I have a whole nother book to get through, so I probably want to flip a little faster. This is invitation. I'm going to make a dinner invitation. I just tucked it in there. I have a few of those coming up in the back of this book here. Some lined paper, steno pad paper. More of that ledger vintage. This comes in a small pack. I don't know what it's called though. Vintage ledger paper. Uh, pattern paper. Another restaurant card. More steno paper. Hmm. Oh, and another. This one got the holes on this side. So another magazine page. Chapter 14. These books are huge. Guess check. Uh, okay. Another big old turkey. 
meats, poultry, and fish. That's what that chapter is. Pastries and pies. You think that would go in desserts? I don't know. Another little recipe card and a planner page from 1973. More of that slightly discolored at the top or aged um, graph paper. Plain white paper with those pretty little corners. Here you can see that um, I used some washi tape because this page again was ripping on the edges. And the washi tape just helped to keep it together. Those pages are really fun. Pretty fragile, but they make the book awesome. Uh, it would still be an awesome book, even without the original pages. I mean, just the cover, the binder, the whole thing is fantastic. So this one has a couple of pages from the book right together. And then uh, another pocket, lace pocket. Another recipe card. Ledger paper. Soups and sauces. Page from the book. These are, this, they're a little bit shorter. These are recipes from another book. Another magazine page for margarine. Those magazine pages, I really like these. They're, I like the colors. I think they're appropriate for the book. They usually, they all have to do with food. Some Bake It Easy little pamphlet. And this is a manila envelope. Oh, a couple of shopping list pages in there. So you see that I poked the hole right there too, so when it folds over, it'll work. All right, I think we're getting to the end here. Um, just a little notepad, ledger paper. It's a plain white paper, but it doesn't have the pretty little corners. Here's some more page from this book, chapter 19, and more of that cardstock. Table settings, guest check. Um, so the way I put it together, these, this book will be listed in my Etsy shop, this one and the other one. Uh, I did a flip through of one a while ago and I was going to put it in my Etsy shop, but I ended up giving it away as a present to my sister-in-law. She's into vintage and she loved it. I was super happy to give that to her. But anyway, what I was going to say is, um, you don't have to keep the pages the way they are in there. Oh, so this is uh, just some recipes and a little Mixmaster Sunbeam advertisement. So this paper pad that I used, uh, these pattern papers, it came with some stickers. So I included the stickers in the back of the book for whomever... Um, purchases they can dress up the pages if they want and as I was saying and kept interrupting myself the pages don't have to stay the way that they are you can certainly they're super easy to move in a five ring binder just open it up take it out move it to wherever you like it so that's a little that's one of the fun features about the binder and when you add pages uh, I used this card here as my template, this one or maybe the one on the front, I'm not sure, to mark the holes to the pages that I wanted to add. So that's super simple. It's here in the book already. Just pop it out, place it on the page that you want, mark, you know, you just need a little hole punch to add pages to this book. Alright, so Better Homes and Gardens, and these are the pages that came with this book. They will come they will go to whoever, whom, whomever buys the book as well. They are, like I said, super fragile, you saw in the book. So there's extras in there, in case the ones that I've, in, in case the ones that I've included maybe don't work out. You can grab one of these and put them in there, or if there's something you like more. All right, so that was Better Homes and Gardens. And here we are, Betty Cracker. It's a picture book. 
and the pictures that came with this book are lovely. So I only have some lace on the binding. I really like the covers of both of these books and so I left as much of the cover showing as I could. But there's Betty Crocker right there. If you don't like it, you know, um, you can always add more lace if you're into more of a decorative kind of um, book. Alright, so these little things came with the book and this book set was given to someone in 1958. Um, 1956 is the copyright of the book. So here's the front little pockets and just a couple of recipe cards in there. This one was in worse shape, this front cover, than the first one. So I just trimmed around the most important part. I thought it shows the copyright of the book, 1956. And I laminated it so it's just a little clear thing. Alright, so it was Betty Crocker book and I had this other Betty Crocker cookie book and I included that little pamphlet. It's a vintage herb seasoning page. I love the feel of this paper. I don't know what kind it is, but it feels really interesting to me. Here's just a blank white paper and I added some of the trim that was the same as the pockets, just on the edge there. This one doesn't have chapters, chapters, excuse me, chapters one through whatever. It just has special headings, or well, this one says special helps. It just has categories. Some music paper, children's writing paper. This is a page from this book. Um, some recipe cards, blank ones. And here uh, is some cardstock with a large lace pocket. See that? This little cut apart came from the paper pad that I used in the other book, or the paper pack. I keep saying pad. Here's just some address, phone numbers, and a little vintage uh, recipe. You. Here's a little bag, and in that bag I put the Hershey's chocolate recipe card. Another page from the Betty Crocker cookie book. A page from this book. More music paper, and there's a little bit of a fabric scrap on the edge there. Letterhead page from this book. Look at that gorgeous picture. I love this blue china. It's just so pretty. They have really pretty pictures. Cardstock. Cardstock uh, also, like I said before, the other one. Uh, this one I don't think has very many pattern papers, scrap with papers, but the cardstock is new. Um, and, you know, you could put pictures on it. It's acid free, things like that. You can put pictures wherever you want. If you're wanting to them to last generations, you're not supposed to put them on acid paper that has acid in them. So that's why they they make sure the paper for scrapbooking doesn't have acid. But they will last a good long time on just about anywhere. So you know. this is coffee dyed coffee dyed paper with lines in it. Composition notebook paper. That happens to me all the time. I mean, if you've seen my videos, you know, I forget the words to the things. Like in my brain, I know what they look like, but the actual word is not coming. Look at all these gorgeous appetizers. Love this book. I love the other one too. It's super vintagey. This one, the pictures, the pictures are what get me. Um, it's a large vellum envelope with a couple of recipes on the inside. I know that this vellum envelope came from an estate sale, the book came from an estate sale, the recipe cards did as well, plus most of the papers. 
Uh, even the fabric came from an estate sale, the little fabric pieces. So this uh, page belongs to a different book, but I just included it. The lined paper came from a estate sale. Another gorgeous picture. This recipe card came from an estate sale. And the lace on here. The cardstock did not. That I got at um, Joann's or Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I'm not sure. So there's just a few little paper pad papers. And another one of those recipe card journaling things. All the ledger paper came from an estate sale. Um, this is that... This watermark textured sort of white paper that was in the other book as well. Beautiful breads. Um, cardstock with just a little touch of the fabric on the edge. It's really pretty. A recipe book from a, or a recipe page from a different book. I don't know what kind of paper that is, but it feels interesting. Cakes. These tabs are in worse shape in this book than they are in the little, slightly older book. So, you, if you don't like them, you could add fabric to the tabs, maybe. Part of the appeal of these books was the original pieces of the book. That's why I left them as they were. The appeal to me, at least. Aside from the ease of adding papers, with the five hole punch or moving papers around. Gingerbread men. See those cute little? That's probably from the Betty Crocker cookery book. This says Heritage Cookies, family favorites. Oh, um, a full cookie jar makes a happy home homey. <laughs> Another uh, manila envelope. There's more stuff in there. There's a little pamphlet recipe and a vintage recipe. Let's see. I got some recipe cards once, like handwritten ones, that were written in a foreign language. I believe it's French. There may be some in here. I didn't double check. Look at those cute cookies! Alright, more cardstock with the fabric on the edge. That fabric is super soft, by the way. I believe it's cotton. All right, more music paper, just because it's fun. I like music paper. Desserts, so pretty. Oh, and I have the pages for this book too. They're just over to the side. When we're done, I'll flipping through, I'll show you too. Um, so this little tuck spot has two separate laces. I guess one could be a slight belly band. Uh, it just wasn't quite wide enough, so I added another piece of lace on top. The Egg and You steno pad paper. And um, a page from this book. Outdoor Entertaining. A little bitty white paper with a tiny scrap. Well, not tiny. You know, a smaller scrap of fabric. Another one of those... Oh, matchbook little notebooks. Composition notebook paper. It's been coffee dyed. Dinner for two. New dinner for two. Betty Crocker cookbook. So whatever Betty Crocker cookbooks I had on hand, I tried to include pages in this book. It seemed appropriate. Just a regular security envelope. It has some recipes in there. Isn't that purple fun? The envelope came from an estate sale as well as these uh, newspaper recipes maybe. I feel like newspaper. It could have been from a magazine. Another cardstock pocket spot. A 
I really like this wide lace here. I think it's gorgeous. And this is a glassine bag. It has just a little pamphlet page recipes in there. I don't think I had one of those in the other book. Um, more scrap of the fabric. Another farm utility needle. I like the package. It's super thick. You could write on it. Use it as a tuck spot if you just take it out, glue it on something. I don't know. Just look at it because it's interesting. That's the best thing about junk journals. Each page is like different. Even if you have like four or five ledger papers, you know, they're throughout the book. So as you're turning the page, each page is different from the one before. It's fun to see what's coming next. I really like the variety of the papers, the different textures, the different sizes. The whole thing appeals to me. All right, and a large index card tucked in here. Again, estate sales. And in the back, a Hershey's blank ingredient and just this little bitty, it's a little bitty memo pad page. Okay, so there is the book, and these are the pages that came with this book. They're a little bit uh, sturdier, less fragile than the previous book. Uh, I'll still put them in a plastic bag, but I just added the pumpkin pie one on the front. But there's other, um, you know, other pictures on the inside. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you're interested in either of these two books, there's a link to my Etsy shop below as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.